بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك فانشر علينا خزاء نعود منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله بي هف توفيق تو استارت حديث 20 عن إخلاص عن sincerity and purifying our action our intention ourselves بالسند المتصل إلى الشيخ الثقة الجليل محمد بن يعقوب الكليني قدس السره So again Imam Khomeini according to his chain of narration uh, up to Shaykh Kuleini he has received this hadith and he mentions it from Shaykh Kuleini uh, through a connected chain there is no gap or interval it's completely connected from his time up to Shaykh Kuleini and then Shaykh Kuleini from Ali ibn Ibrahim from his father Ibrahim ibn Hashim from Qasim ibn Muhammad and al Minkari and Sufyan ibn Uyaymah and Abi Abdullah alayhi salam from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam this hadith is about verse 3 of Surah Al-Mulk chapter Mulk number ayah 3 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لَيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Of course, the ayah is more than this الَّذِي خَلَّقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا If you want to start from the beginning تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. These are verses two and three. But what is mentioned in the hadith is this part. في قول الله تعالى ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. So this is a hadith that someone is quoting from Imam Sadiq commenting on this phrase. In order to examine you, to try you, to test you, which of you is better or the best in action? But as I said, it has something before this, which means Allah, may Allah be blessed, the one who has the kingdom in his hand, and he has created خلقة, created the death and life in order to test you so Allah wants to test us to see which of us is the best or better in action so now let's see what is the commentary of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam قال ليس يعني أكثركم عملا. الله سبحانه وتعالى didn't mean those who have more action. those who are more in their action. so it's not a matter of quantity. he didn't say ليبلوكم أيكم أكثر عملا. who does more actions. for example who does more prayer. Who does more charity? No. Who does prayer or charity or other actions better? ليس يعني أكثركم عملا ولكن أصوبكم عملا The one who does it better, more appropriate. Sabab with sad means what is right. Thawab with tha means reward. Thawab. But sawab means what is right. And musib is the person or the opinion that hits the truth. 
So, aswabakum amala means the one among you who is more appropriate, more truthful, and more right in his action. So, what is then al asaba? Imam himself explains this further to be aswab, to do asaba, to meet or hit the reality and the truth. Means or in al asaba khashiyatullah wa niyatu sadiqah wal khashiya. Or according to some versions, an niyatu sadiqatul hasan. Asaba who is better in action means who does his action uh, in more compliance with the truth needs explanation. Imam says, إِنَّمَا الْإِصَابَةِ خَشِيَةُ اللَّهِ Isaba is really this and not anything else. So there is no uh, alternative. There are few things added to it, but you cannot have Isaba without خَشِيَةُ اللَّهِ خَشِيَةُ اللَّهِ خَشِيَةُ is a kind of fear which is not because something is dangerous a kind of fear which is developed when you are faced with something great something magnificent something that humbles you your experience is experience of feeling very humble and being full of awe and respect for what you are faced with and this is why Quran says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَةِ Who are the people who are supposed to have the greatest khashi of Allah? Those who have greatest knowledge. And this is their knowledge that gives them more recognition of greatness of Allah and their need for being humble. Like for example, if you have a very great book, Suppose a very great book by Mullah Sabra, like Al Aswar. Who can better appreciate the position of Mullah Sabra in this book? Al Ulama, those who know the subject, who know different people in this field, different texts in this field, and they find this exceptional. So, a mu'min, especially those who are alim, are expected to have greatest khashia for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when your action comes with khashia, it means that you are on the right track. If I say my prayer, which means that I am standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am talking to him, I am aware of his presence, and I have no khashia, it means something is wrong. Something has to be fixed. Otherwise, how can you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the whole world, and not feel you are very, very humble, and He is very, very great and above any imagination, any measure. You automatically become full of khashia, and this would lead to khushu'ah khushu'ah which is the quality that Allah connects it actually to salat istainu bi sabri wa salat wa innaha la kabiratun illa ala al khashi'in khushu' is a result of having khashya there are two different terms khasha'a khashya there are two terms but why someone develops khushu'ah because they have khashya. When they understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this would appear in the form of khushu'a, which is a very deep sense of humility. It's not just on their body. It's body and heart. Khudu'a is something that you can see it easily on the body. The humility which is obvious, is visible. Khushu'a, you cannot just say someone has khushu' if you look at the body, even if his body looks very 
humble, he's bending, he's bowing, but this doesn't assume that he has khushu. Maybe he has khulu, not khushu. Khushu needs khashya, needs that sense of awe and respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in order to have the best of actions, we need to have khashyatullah wa niyyatu sadiqah. And we should have true and honest intention. Without having honest intention, our action has no value. Because إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Actions are dependent on intention and are measured and value, evaluated based on intention. وَالْخَشْيَ Either for emphasis khashya is repeated or as I said in some versions it is وَالنِّيَّةُ الصَّادِقَةُ الْحَسَنَةِ Honest and beautiful niya, good niya. So this is what we want. So Allah has created death and life in order to test us and examine us to find out. Of course, he doesn't need to find out, but this is something that has to happen because this is actually how we become good in action through the test. It's not that someone is already good and we just test him to understand no this type of test is actually to give opportunities to people to become good and to improve themselves so he created the death and life in order to see who of you are best in action which means they have more khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more honest intention so you see the physics of action is important but not the main thing. When we go to Salat for example, we stand, we have Qiyam, we go to Ruku, we bend, we go for Sajda. All of them are important. But this is only the physics, this is the surface of Salat. This does not guarantee acceptability of Salat. Yes, this is a requirement for validity of Salat. But the spirit of Salat is khashyatullah wa niyyatu sadiqah. If you have khashya, you have presence of heart. And your niyyah is to only please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is important is not just to have this to begin with. It's very important to preserve also this condition. You know, sometimes uh, we have good intention at the beginning, but later, unfortunately, we lose that sincerity or that khashya. It's very important. Therefore, you have to make sure that with different methods, you preserve that level of khashya and truthful uh, intention. Sometimes, if you are very, I don't know, uh, much under pressure, for example, you are too tired, too thirsty, too cold, too hot, or you, I don't know, you have eaten too much, you are too much sleepy, too much noise. These can stop khashya in the first place, or you begin with khashya, but quickly it dies. Therefore, we need to plan in the way that when it comes to the time of Salat, we have the least of internal and external pressures and distractions. Plus, sincerity. So not only having this khashya, but also not to let bad intentions penetrate into your mind. Sometimes we do something sincerely, but later we try to give it uh, a public recognition. We try to introduce it to other people. So we have to be very careful why we do this. So Imam Sadiq said, Thumma qal, the narrator says, then he said, Al ibqa'u ala al amal hatta yakhlusah 
أشد من العمل to continue with the action till it becomes pure is more difficult than the action itself sometimes it may take years sometimes it take months it may take weeks depending on the action depending on the person condition but it's not something easy like you learn how to write beautifully how to paint something beautifully you develop a habit you want to develop it, uh, some skills it takes time والعمل الخالص الذي لا تريد أن يحمدك عليه أحد إلا الله pure or sincere action is the action that you don't want anyone other than Allah to praise you it's not that you necessarily dislike people's praise it's not that you want them not to praise no Good actions should be praised, and also we maybe uh, somehow benefit when people praise because then we can get feedback, we can know where to invest more. But what is important is that you don't want, you don't expect, you don't demand that anyone other than Allah praise you. If people know or don't know, Praise or don't praise, it's not in the center of your attention. Your center of attention is to make sure that you find out the best action, the wisest action, and you are able to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people praise, alhamdulillah. If they don't praise or even they don't come to know because it's not necessary to inform them, no problem. وَالنِّيَّةُ أَفْضَلُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ Niyya is more important, is better, more privileged than action. Because action itself without niyya, if you include niyya in action, yes, of course, then niyya is a great part of action. But if you are comparing niyya with amal, which means physical action, Niyya is better than physical action. Niyya is the one that gives life to the action. Niyya is the one that gives a spiritual status to the action. Niyya is the one that makes an action something that would be manifested in the hereafter. If someone without any Niyya, without any understanding, for example, someone who is sleeping, says something or does something and has no role in this this may not be resurrected this may not have any spiritual value any value in the hereafter because that person was sleeping and had no attention and intention niya is the one that when it is there makes it significant and it would be certainly uh, taken into account in the hereafter من يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره Certainly this is about the niya along with action or action which has niya Otherwise just doing something that you have no niya for it would not be seen necessarily ألا وإن النية هي العمل Not only niya أفضل من العمل Be aware that truly niya is the amal is action Either in the sense that the greatest part of action is niya, and if you have niya but you are not able to act, still you benefit. But if you have action without niya, it's not beneficial. Niya without action benefits, but action without niya doesn't have any value. So niya is the most important part. It's the life, the soul of the action. And also, niya by itself is an action, because it's an action of heart. So, salat as a uh, physical act with niya becomes salat. What is difference? What is different between salat of a human being and a robot? What is different between salat of a mu'min and munafiq? 
is the Niya, not necessarily the physics. So Niya is the most important part and Niya is also an action of the heart. Niya is the hidden aspect of your physical action, physical ibadah, but by itself is also a spiritual act. Then Imam Sadiq salam recited this ayah, قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِ It's a very beautiful ayah that our ulama in philosophy, in akhlaq, in usul al-fiqh, in aqaid have discussed in Surah Isra, verse 87. Tell all act based on their shakila, based on their form, a scheme, our actions don't come just, you know, arbitrarily from us or without any connection, without any reason. They don't just come. There is a basis. If you see a fragrance, this fragrance must come from something. Fragrance cannot come from vacuum. There must be something which has fragrance. Actions also come from something deeper inside us. So, what beliefs you have, what ideas you have, what ideals you have, what qualities you have, all together make a basis, a source, an origin for your actions. Imam said, يعني على نيته. The mom said it means that every person acts based on his or her intention. Of course, it doesn't mean that niya is equal to shakila or shakila is equal to niya, but certainly niya is also related, closely related to shakila, because actually it is the shakila of every person that shapes the niya and the action. There is a discussion about test and I think uh, we already made it clear and inshallah in the next session we will talk about testing and about death because it says what does it mean that death is created is this an existential thing or not inshallah we will talk in the next session وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين